God damn it. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. want more <laughs> like yeah. like i'm not ready to be done we're still there's two more episodes of sopranos left yeah, i'll try the box to do with this yeah yeah and it's weird it's it's pretty embarrassing i think having a hangover when it wasn't even for a special event you know it was just yeah i was watching just sopranos with my father-in-law yeah 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 not worth it. You're like, um, I wasted this hangover. Like, this yeah. should have been something. This I, I only think be. I have a few left. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, yeah. Totally. If I'm going to um, wake up and regret, it's like, there better be a really good reason for it. Yeah. Anyway, let me do a short intro for, for everybody, for all the folks out there. Um, everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, I met uh, this amazing comic uh, okay. back in June. July, June, something like that. Yeah. Um, and she's hilarious. And one of the things I love about her is that um, what I love, what I love about my favorite comics, the comics that I'm into, are comics that um, just tell the truth, and it's raw, and it doesn't matter if it makes you feel uncomfortable, and at the same time, it's still funny. Um, yeah. I love, uh, I love the sense of humor and the darkness, and I relate to it. And I'm very excited to talk to Monterey <laughs> Martinez. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for that intro. Um, I appreciate it. You know, it's, what's funny is like, after after we did i think the first night um it was june um yeah. the reason i was goofing around with your name is that my family a lot of my family came to that first show oh yeah i remember they were very sweet yeah, yeah they loved you so much but oh. none of them could say your name they're like <laughs> they're manta like, ray malibu Mom, montana Mar something. that's yeah margarita i knew it was something with oh, an M. people Mom. call it margarita all the time i'm yeah. like Let's not be. I know. I know it was. There was something Mexican about it. Um, yeah. Like I know there was something <laughs> stupid about it. It was some <laughs> real stupid M name, and you're like, Yeah, mm. that's me. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, Just Google it. You'll find out. But um, but anyways, thanks so much for joining me. I'm sorry. So we've had like a few confusions in the last few weeks with things, but it's all it's all good. I'm so glad we oh, can finally thank connect. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, but what I like to do on this podcast is, um it's it's all art based basically that's what i oh, do cool. and so i like to get into um you know the art of things and just but just you know wherever it leads it can lead wherever it wants but um i find co you know comedian you know comedy and comedians to be true artists and a, a lot of people like seem a little bit like weirded out by that i don't know a lot of mm. the people that follow my podcast because they're all expecting me to be inter you know interviewing or talking to painters and sculptors and everything right. and um so i i really enjoy having comics on from time to time because to me now that i'm doing it um as an artist already and then now getting into it i realize even more how similar it is to when i'm creating paintings and writing and whatever it's all um um very similar i think same same kind of um I guess brain stems firing away. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, well, you're creating an image that you're trying to have people perceive to like understand, like, yeah, you know, a vision that you have. Like, your words are a vision that you're expressing, and you know, a picture is a vision that you know you're expressing as well. Yeah, exactly. And that's part of the fun, I think, about comedy. And what I've noticed for myself, what works best, the more I can describe something, the more people are laughing. Because yeah. they're, if they're starting to like it's see the it, it's the accuracy. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's when yeah, because people like when you connect with people, it's because you're resonating with them, and when you're resonating with them, it's because it's it's true for them. So they're like, or they know someone, or it's like it's so it's either so so like heavily like crafted to where 
you know, your brain's playing or it's just accuracy. So like when people, you know, laughter is involuntary. And so, but like every single time when, you know, if a scientist were to study like, oh, okay, they just laughed. Oh, okay, they just laughed. You know, there's only really like three or four categories where people are laughing from. It's either accuracy, something that's ridiculous, something that's relatable, yeah. and something that's just so like silly and like crafted. And you're like, oh, what you put this here, that, oh, oh my God, I get it. You know what I mean? So, you know, a good comic is able to constantly just, you know, they're just crafting for you to to see it in the same way they see it and that you guys are both like, oh, I see the thing, that's fun. Yeah. Oh, I see the thing, that's funny. And when they, do, when they don't laugh, it's because you're not, you're not really resonating or you're not accurate or you haven't crafted it to where it's like genuinely funny yet. Yeah, or they're terrible people, but. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like, or they're all But it, it, it does feel almost like, like uh, an, an orchestra in a way, like you're mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you know, I want you to laugh here and you're supposed to laugh here. Um, sure. Yeah. It's a lot of fun too. I, it's yeah. like, I've been having so much fun. Um, and I think that part of it too, that as far as the arts go um, that I relate with is, and I don't know how you relate with this is just the, the struggle um, mm -hmm. of, you know, but it's, it's, it, in a way it's sort of what attracts me to comedy is how hard um, it is sculpting a, a bit and then, yeah. you know, continuing it, you know, you know, there's something there and it, maybe it's not funny right away mm -hmm. and you try it and it's like, Oh, you know, but then yeah. you kind of, you know, it, so you stick with it. Do you, do you ever find yourself in that situation where, you know, like, Hey, I know this is funny and it's not really the audience fault. You know, it's just, For I sure. don't, I'm not doing it the right way yet. Totally. There's, I mean, I definitely have had jokes where I'm like, you know, it's like, I'm like, well, that took me eight months to like really, and there's times where like, now I, I always tell comics and I have to remind myself too. And I, I you know, I'm not a headliner yet. Like I've only been doing Santa for seven, almost eight years. So it's like, I know I still have so much to grow and learn, but I always tell people where it's like, you know, you don't ever pander to the audience, but definitely listen to them. You know, like mm -hmm. not like, listen, like you have to take direction, but yeah, it's, yeah it's directions where if they're not laughing you don't have to get offended or you have to get defensive and just be like yeah. okay well fuck you people think that's funny and you're like no, no no like these are directions so if you hear okay there's nothing there doesn't mean you can't talk about your subject matter so say yeah. if you have a molestation joke like oh fuck i guess i guess i can't talk about molestation i'm like no you can but like how you lead us there or like how you peel it apart maybe just change that so this way people feel safe or people feel like, okay, like I can laugh at this. Like, so that, that, that's all, you never have to change your subject matter ever. I think you, yeah. if you want to talk about rape or if you want to talk about cancer, or you want to talk about, you know, abortion, whatever dark thing, you know, or taboo thing, you can do it. It's just like, give yourself different options. If you're like, if you're like, yeah, my mom died and yeah, she was a fucking bitch. And you're like, people probably aren't going to laugh at that because people can't believe that you would be happy that your mom died. But yeah. if you painted the picture and you're like, you know, I didn't get along with my mom a lot. And, uh, you know, she was a terrible person. And when she died, I got to be honest, I wasn't sad. And people, yeah. then people will be like, oh, they'll laugh because they saw the authenticity and then they heard the joke. So now, you know what I mean? So there's just like little baby changes like that, that like, will just literally change your whole entire joke, change your whole entire set, change how people perceive you and whether they like you or not. Yeah, for sure. I and for you with what with your I'm curious about your writing process. Um yeah. are you someone that thinks of the idea, writes it down right away, um, and just continues to write and write it, or do you just think about it and then, you know, don't write it down, just get on stage and start talking? Or are you more like come up with a, a good setup and then the punch and then it let depends. it evolve? Okay. Yeah, I think like I think some I think some jokes come off like that where it's like there's times where I've just been on stage and I'll just riff something and I'm like oh that joke just it, it'll just come out of me and I'm like mm -hmm. and I'll be in my head I'm like damn that was good like I'm like how the fuck <laughs> did I just think of that and I'll be like dude you you rule and then there's times where I'm like I will genuinely think of the idea I jot it in my phone first like just yeah. like a couple little beats like it's this this this. 
and then I'll try it. And then when I hear it back, I usually, you know, I know you're supposed to, and kind of, you always have to record your sets. If I'm being honest, I think you should do that. But do I do it a lot of the times? No, I just, I, you know, it's, it's nothing than other than like, I just, yeah, it, I just don't always listen to myself, but I very yeah. much so listen to the audience when I'm on stage and I'm like, eh, okay, this has to go here. Mm. So like there are times and if it keeps not working, then I will sit with a notebook and then I'll manually like write and I'll give myself different options where I'm like, is it this, 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 this? I'm like, okay, or is it this, 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 this? And then I'll just say it out loud in my head. And then, and then when I'm like, oh, I got it. And usually when I get it that time, like in my head, like where, and I write out different options, 95% of the time it works on stage. Oh yeah, that's yeah. awesome. But there are times, like, like I said, like obviously like, you know, I do have a rape joke and I do have an abortion joke and I do have a suicide joke. And um, like the abortion joke, I, the abortion joke, I had the premise and then like at a mic one time, I just said the punchline. I had, didn't write out the punchline cause I like hadn't like thought of it really yet. And mm. then it, it just, sometimes that happens where I know the premise and I'm like, and eh, the punchline will just kind of like reveal itself. Like when I go <laughs> on stage that sometimes, you know, at mics, obviously I do that. Not like at shows, but, um, and then I was like, Oh, okay. I was like, that's it. That's perfect. And then when I feel excited, then I like to like just expand it. And that's what, you know, that eventually you want, you have to do an hour. So, you know, I'm like, I always tell comics too, they're like, I need a new joke. I need a new joke. I'm like, no, 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 you don't need a new joke. You need to expand the jokes that you have. Like, yeah. you know, eventually your one joke, if it's about like, say have a joke about your kids, you know, instead of just being something that's 30 seconds to a minute, that's going to be 10 minutes alone. So you're, you're technically writing new jokes but it's extending from what you already have. Yeah. It just goes out. Like creating branches have... off of it. That Yeah. Totally. No, I, I've been doing the, a lot of that lately, but it's kind of fun. Cause like, I'm, I'm basically just doing the mics. I've, I have a few shows every once in a while. Right. Um, uh, which has been nice because I have a certain amount of time. I'm like, okay, I, I have a show coming up, but I have, I can do this many mics before. And right. what, I, what I like to do is um, usually start off with, some brand new ideas and thoughts um, mm -hmm. and then end with what I know works and kind of right. experiment. And it's been a lot of fun, like piecing together, but I had a show last week where um, it was like, I had an eight minute set. Um, all the comics had eight minutes um, and it was going really well. I was having a great time. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm doing great, man. This is, I was having so much fun. Um, and then I did the, I, I made the mistake and it's, it's, it's one of those things where you like, while I was doing, it, I'm like, I should have ended. I just, I just said this joke. It landed. Everyone is going crazy. Mm -hmm. I've got 30 seconds left. I should have yeah. just said, that's it. Been like, all right, like, yeah. thank you so much. I'm going to, I'm going to end Yeah. I killed the, the whole time. I was like, yeah. And I, I was, it was that great feeling like I'm doing so great. And then of course I try a new idea that I thought of to end it. And it was like, it, and it just flopped. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But then it was one of those things where I was like, okay, see you guys later. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but that's also just like, you'll, you'll learn like what works best for you. Like yeah. some comics, like when I, like, I know for a fact, I'm like, for me personally, like when I do, um, when I am doing a show, I know I have to start with something that immediately works. Like I know yeah. immediately, like, and this is obviously everybody has a different, a different path. Some people like to start with something new because it excites them and gets them in a gear of like excitement so it's like everybody has you know it's just a code you have to unlock for yourself yeah your yeah. number might be seven two two one one and mine seven <laughs> two two one four one you know what i mean yeah whatever unlocks you to be your best performer as soon as you learn what it is you'll be like okay i know that like i have to address the room I know that I have to do a little crowd work. I know I do one joke that works immediately. Then I know in the middle, I do stuff that's newer. And then I, you know what I mean? You'll, you'll get in your rhythm. Yeah. And that just takes time. And it's sure. hard when you only get like, you know, when, as a comic that when you're starting out, when you only get five minutes, you of know, course. it's of like, course. it's like, man, you know, what, built. how, how much can I, you know, I want to make people laugh and I want them, I want them to laugh the entire time. 
for sure. Um, but it's like, you know, but I think I, to me, that's kind of exciting. Like I really, yeah. and like what I'm starting to do now is I'm starting to develop a lot of five minutes. Like I, yeah. um, I've got like, you know, think I probably have about 25 minutes of stuff now, but the fun thing, what I've been doing is taking those and mixing them together and mm -hmm. I find that I come up with whole new ideas from that, you know? Right. Um, and in three years, 25 of those minutes, you're probably only like seven yeah, of it. You exactly. Know I mean? And you'll yeah. never, you'll never touch the rest of it. And like, and that's just how yeah. it goes, you know, like most comics, you know, like we always think we have more minutes than what we do. And it's like, but then once you really start crafting it, you're like, oh, this is bullshit. This is just an idea. Yep. This is, da -da -da. <laughs> but then those yeah. seven minutes that you have, those seven minutes grow, 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 grow. And then you yeah. do get 25 minutes. Yeah. You know? That's, that's the thing that I think about it that I, I'm having a lot of fun with is that yeah. part of it, the, the creative part of it. Totally. Um, so you have been doing, you said six years, seven, uh, seven, seven, seven years, be eight in April. Yeah. And you were you're originally from New York, right? You, I'm from Buffalo, New York. Um, yeah. Okay. So what was your start with, with comedy? Like, how did you even dip your toes into um, it? Um, I mean, I always loved stand up. I was a huge stand up fan before I ever did it. Like when I was very young, um, if I ever watched TV, it would, I, and I didn't even know that I loved stand up. It just was something that like, if it was on, I was always watching it. Yeah. Um, so like naturally I was very attracted to it. And then, um, I knew that I loved comedy and I knew I wanted to write and create. So I thought I was going to be like a writer or like a comedic actress or something. So I was like, I knew it was comedy. Um, and my whole life people were always like, you're so funny. You're so funny. And I was like, I know. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I was a junior in high school. I remember I had a substitute teacher and he was like letting us like play games or whatever. And I was standing up in front of the class and we were playing hangman. And I was like, you know, like being the person like writing the shit. And I was just like joking, like busting everybody's balls and like roasting them or whatever. And then my substitute, my substitute teacher looks at me and he's like, you're going to be a stand up comic one day. And I was like, what? I was like, say it so everybody can fucking hear. <laughs> um, and and so that was like the first like little inkling. And then when I moved to Los Angeles, I did do sketch and improv for like six years before I did stand up. Mm. And it was funny because like deep down, like I knew I loved stand up and I knew I should be doing it. But I think that I I like loved it so much and had such a regard and respect for it that I thought that I was being egotistical of being like, well, I should do that. Like, if I like it, I should do it. Like, I was like, no, that's just me being egotistical. You don't watch LeBron James and go, I can dunk a ball. But then like, I realized I was like, no, I can dunk a ball. Like, yeah. And that was, yeah. That's, yeah, that's interesting. That's kind of, to be honest, that's kind of how I felt because, you know, I, I've always loved comedy. I've always been a huge fan of it. Yeah. And I've always like written things, you know, just for myself, like little jokes right. and goof around with friends. But because of my, you know, my career as an illustrator and I've got kids and everything. Right. Like I, I, there's throughout the years I've had that, that inclination of, I should just try it. I live in Chicago. Yeah. There's so many places I should just try it. And I never did. I never did. Yeah. Um, and I also thought that the thing is, is I know enough about comedy that I'm like, I can't commit to, I can't do it. Like there's not enough, yeah. you know, I, you know, I, I just, I, if I was a single guy, yeah. You know, and, and I just kept making excuses all the yeah. time. And that's the thing. Um, the, yeah. the devil will give you an excuse for everything. Yeah. And, and that's and that's your job is to just know to swat away at it. Yeah. And that's why I, I, I'm so thankful to Steve uh, uh, for the so this this shows I did with you in June. That was my second time um, um, doing a guest spot or whatever you call it. Yeah. Guess what? Um, uh, the first time was when he he talked me into it. And that was you know, that changed everything. Yeah. <laughs> he basically was like, um, you, you keep talking about how you want to do it. He's like, you know, how yeah. about you open for me? And I was like, what the, you know, so right. I just, I just, you know, he gave me this thing, this opportunity Platform. that I couldn't, yeah. I could, I had to do it. Yeah. You um, can't say no. yeah. but I, I didn't know that once I did that, that I was going to be like hooked. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. It's so it's, funny because I met Steve actually first when I was a waitress before I was even doing stand up. And he came in there, he came into the W um, and this was circa like 2010 or 2011. And I was doing sketch and improv and I, di I didn't know who he was. Um, 
but you know, I was just joking around just like, you know, being charming. And, um, and he came up to me and he's like, do you do comedy? And I was like, yeah, I was like, I do sketch and improv. And he goes, you need to do stand up." And I was like, I was like, I know, don't hit on me. And he's like, I'm, I'm married. I'm not hitting on you. And I was like, oh, and I was like, well, you still have to tip me. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so, and then I had remembered his name, you know, I obviously remember what he looked like because he was like, you should do stand up. He's like, I'm a comic. And so I like looked him up and I saw, and I was like, oh my God, I was like, how cool, whatever. And then I was just, you know, being, I'm like a stand up comic told me I was really funny. So like, mm. yeah. <laughs> and then years later, like one of my first times featuring uh, was at this um, comedy club in San Diego. And they like messaged me, they're like, hey, can we had a dropout or whatever happened? They're like, can you get down here? And um, it was only my second time ever featuring like in my life. And I was like, okay, I was like, I'm, I can be down there. And I was like, who's it for? And they're like, Steve Byrne. And I was like, that's the motherfucker who told me to do stand up. And I'm like, and then I just like knew, I was like, okay, like, obviously I know that like I made the right choices. I'm on the right, that's like too synchronistic. I'm like, yeah, but yeah. He's an amazing guy, man. He's such yeah, a cool guy. Is. Yeah, he really is. Um, yeah, I was actually having a, he's so nice. I always feel, you know, nervous texting him about like certain like i couldn't find your email because my instagram was oh. being all wacky and i so i mm. sent him a, a text i'm like hey man uh, i hope this isn't annoying yeah oh, <laughs> he's like no, no, no worries no. no worries pal you know yeah um, no, he's so nice and he's, he's yeah. so uh he's so generous like in every way but he's also like very generous when it comes to like comics and like giving him giving them his time his advice his like ex knowledge like and like when he believes in someone or if he thinks you're funny or he thinks you're a good person, like he'll go to bat for you and he'll like, yeah. he'll do what he can to like help. And I'm like, you know, there's not a lot of humans like that. Certainly not a lot of comics and people in entertainment like that, but uh, he's, yeah, yeah, for he's sure. A no, like good person. that's the thing, you know, that is, and I, I, you know, I've met, I've, I've met enough uh, celebrity type people where there is, um you know there's a comic i don't really want to say his name you know on this now but pretty big yeah. comic that i had on my podcast and right. um and he's actually the only person that has ever asked to be on my podcast and i couldn't mm -hmm. believe that this person and i'll tell you um uh well i'll edit it out so oh okay and um so anyways that experience was it was weird like he wanted me he wanted to be on my podcast and yeah. um, I met him um, at his, at a hotel that he was in, in Chicago. And it was just weird. The whole thing was weird and it was awkward. And um, I just had this vibe that he just thought he was so cool the whole time. And I, and mm. I just, and I just felt like this the whole time. Yeah. And it was just like, a, it was not a fun conversation. Um, and I eventually just took it down because I was like, you know, I, I was excited to, to talk to this person, but like, right. Um, and I've had a few experiences like that, but Steve is one of those guys that's like, He's so down to earth and like, right. just like you said, very genuine, uh, genuine For person. Sure. And um, yeah, so I, I well, it's I, funny know. because people like that, like, and, and people think that it's, um, that it's a fame or it's a money thing. And I'm like, but the truth is the fame and the money just like highlights their demons. They're that person with yeah. no fame or no money. They still exactly. have ego. They yeah. still are rude. They still are difficult. <laughs> they still are pretentious, but now that they have, fame and money now they just are surrounded by yes people who buy into that treatment because they want yeah. something from you and then everybody just does this dance because they're like i need <laughs> something from him and so i'm gonna fucking bow down to him and be like yeah Mar oh you're so great oh you're so talented oh my god you're so amazing oh my god you're the best and then he's yeah. like all right <laughs> these are the people i'm gonna keep surrounding myself by because they're playing into my system and yeah. it just just which at, which as on. a creative person is like such Disgusting. a dangerous place to be though yeah because that you 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 know i totally believe that you do need that struggle and you need that that reality thrown in your face sometimes of who you really are and what you are right. in order for you to grow and become a better person you know yeah i mean that the, <laughs> artists are not you're just like hey yeah. like don't you don't you want authenticity because like yeah. that's going to be the most like rewarding and that's like when life feels the best is like when you're being authentic with yourself and others are, you know, being the same way back. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It was funny though. One of the first things, I mean, he was, don't get me wrong. He was nice, Yeah. but that the vibe was 
just, you know, it wasn't a good vibe, but yeah. one of the first things he said when he s- sat down is he looked at me and he goes, he goes, uh, man, those are some terrible tattoos. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, yeah, he's like, those are terrible. He's like, how can you be a, a good artist and, and have ter- the worst tattoos? Your, your tattoos are terrible. And the whole, so right away, I'm just like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, and you're like, like, was he, t- I'm assuming he was trying to be funny. And I'm uh, like, I don't can- know. I don't, it didn't seem yeah, that he, way you're like nope he just really did not like my tattoos <laughs> yeah. yeah i think he was being very honest what if i was like i mean the tattoos are really uh, bad no, yeah. I don't, i've never even seen them so i was like we've talked about it yeah. and this is the thing steve actually wants like this is something that we've all been talking about <laughs> yeah i actually called marlon and was like can you tell yeah. him this <laughs> um yeah, no, people like that, you know, again, unfortunately, they get a platform. And when yeah. they get the platform, you know, it it goes under the umbrella. I was like, oh, that celebrities are bad people or celebrities are assholes. I'm like, no, no, no that's just an asshole who became yeah, a celebrity. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I to be honest, it, he was very nice and we had, it was a good talk. It's just, it's just the vibe, you know. Yeah. My whole point was just that, just that, you know, Steve is one of those guys that just, he's he's always been so nice that it's like yeah like are you for real nice (laughs) yeah 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 no yeah he's for real nice and he's a good guy he's a fun hang and he like yeah he just he's a good person he's like a good husband he's a good father like you know because you see you see a lot of comics again you know because having a little bit of fame and money and success like people will you know, they shed their morals little by little yeah. because now they have access to. So if that means cheating or that means, you know, like treating anyone like a little minion, if that means, you know, drinking or doing drugs too much or whatever, it's just like your morals will shed because now you have nothing disciplining you. Yeah. Like, you know, not having the money to do something or not having access to pussy or whatever. But it's like now you have access to everything, and it's like that really is going to determine your. It's like, what will you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you with mean? all that pushy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so things have been weird, obviously, right? This mm-hmm. last like couple, almost two years now, it seems like. Yeah. Um, and you have been in LA the entire time. Yeah. How? And I know, like, the scene. Like just before everything happened, it was every everyone that I know was like the comedy store, the comedy store, the comedy store. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it just that's the place that's, you know, the place to be and everything. And then throughout all this stuff, it's like all these comics that everyone knows obviously moved, like a lot of people going to Texas and different things. Mm-hmm. And so I was curious, like, what what is the scene and the vibe like right now in L.A. as far as the comedy scene with a lot of the I mean, is there are there more openings now at the comedy um. store? <laughs> No, I'm like, no, actually. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's like worse. I think it's probably the same. But I Mm. think, um, you know, it's it. LA is just a competitive place in general, because it's like, whether you want to come and be a director, a writer, a dancer, a producer, it's like, okay, there's 4 million people doing it, literally. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the county has 10 or the county, I think it has 10 million people. Um, and then like the city of Los Angeles is 4 million and, mo- and 2 million of those are probably all people in the industry and 2 million are like doctors and nurses and bank account, whoever the fuck. And, um, so it's, it's just naturally a very competitive, um, environment. So I, I think that no matter what and what year and what, cause people are like the eighties or the, no, it's just yeah. a competitive place. So mm-hmm. it's like, whether people are moving or whatever, but people then come here, you know what I mean? It's always a hub. So I yeah. still, right now, I feel like the comedy scene, you know, cause I started here. Um, I feel like it's lost a little bit of it's like heartbeat, like, or like the community, like aspect of mm. like comedy doesn't feel like it's there right now. And that could be my personal interpretation, but I feel like before the pandemic, um, we had uh like we we had some specific hub places that like all comics from kind of all the different scenes because you have the alt scene you have like the gritty like kind of dive bar valley scene you have the club scene and then you have you know there's like some nerd like so there's like maybe four like major scenes in los angeles and it basically is based off a location you know but different types of people 
live in different types of areas, like the artsy areas versus the trendy areas versus the cheap areas. So like, you know, those areas, you know, reflect the kind of people that hang yeah. out at some places. So the vibes are different, but anyway, but we would have these hubs where like everybody from every kind of scene would go to, and we don't have those hub spots now. So it's like, people just seem like they're more segregated or they're more like in just their little baby, you know, the three places that they like to go to the three places they like to go. And I'm like, okay, we need to get like our major, like three places back that like everybody could come. Cause it's like, you want to showcase in front of your, I do at least I want to showcase in front of my peers. And like, I made it a habit when I was starting, when I first started, like I kept to myself and I went to only like dive, like no, nobody was going to type of mics because I was like, I want to get good. I don't want anybody to see me when I'm not good. You know what I mean? And at first, like, I was like, Oh, that's like a, you know, is that an ego thing where like, I'm scared for people to see me fail. And I'm like, no, that was a very smart thing that I did because when I started like emerging a little bit in LA, mm-hmm. people are like, where did you come from? And I'm like, bitch, I've been here, but I was very smart about it. Cause I'm not about to have, if everybody watches you bomb, like these bigger comics, they're just going to remember that. They're gonna be like, Oh, I remember that girl. She bombs. So it's like, you know, mm-hmm. I always tell newer comics, like start small, like just get good. Don't show up at the improv in the comedy store when you're a year in and you're thinking like, I'm good. And I, you're good for maybe where you are at a year, but you're not good compared to this person yeah. who's seven years in and they're talented. You're not going to compete with them. You're just, yeah. um, <laughs> it doesn't mean when you're seven years in that maybe, but you know what I mean? You won't, you won't know until you put the time in. Yeah. So I, I think it's important to showcase in front of your peers. And I think it's important to have those spots. So I feel like, you know, the, there are people in the LA scene, like we used to have this um, thing called comedy bureau and it would be like all of our mics and all of our shows would like kind of be like listed on there. And I don't know if they're not doing it anymore, but I feel like once that comes back and then like once, you know, uh, a couple of clubs, like, you know, uh, just start popping off a little bit more then we'll have like more of a community based again but yeah it feels a little it feels like a little uh just segregated I guess and just Hmm. yeah not as like yeah not as exciting but like I'm excited but I just feel like it it'll pick back up but that's anything that's life is just cyclical so it's like eh, we're hibernating right now yeah I mean For someone like you that's been doing it for almost eight years, how is it difficult to get spots at places like the comedy store? Oh, for sure. You only get spots at the comedy store unless you're a regular, unless you're doing a bringer show there. But that's what I mean is like, how do you get, how do they get to that point where they can, you know, be seen? It's, it's a really long process. So basic, not, so the belly room is the comic where it's like, they start to like look at people, but obviously Adam, the booker, move to texas so now they have a new booker Mm. and this new booker you're like well she's never seen me go up so how am i going to get booked there and that's that's where a lot of comics are at where it's like okay uh and then there are you know some people who like so basically you could go get in through being a door person like a door guy you can get in like so they have potluck that's their their Mm. mic on mondays which they don't they're not doing right now but you go to potluck and 200 people sign up and 15 people get picked. And, you know, you have to hope that they're watching when you go up. And a lot of times they're not. And then you have to do well. And you're just in front of comics who wish they were up and they're not. And to be honest, a lot of people do. I'll, I will not ever blame the room. Um, a lot of people buckle under the pressure and because it's like a lot of yeah. comics won't go to certain mics. It's like, Oh, it's just all comics and comics don't laugh. I'm like, no then do your job good yeah they should make them laugh like that's on you um so you know and if the booker doesn't see you you you're only gonna get up like three times a year so you're like fucks you know what i mean because it's just so it's it's a long process i i respect the process but i think that um i i wish that the the mic was like invitation only because sometimes i feel like they're wasting these slots on like a a a comic who's like only been around and god bless like i know it sucks being like oh well we should get the same opportunities if we're a year or two year in no because you're not ready like i promise you you're not ready there's never been a comic who's two years in doesn't mean i can't see their potential i'm like okay they had but i'm like 
you at two years is not as good as someone with seven years. Like yeah. there are times where people at seven years are just not fun, but I'm saying a funny person at seven yeah. years versus a funny person at two years is just a night and day difference. So I'm mm-hmm. like, let's have it be a closed, like an invitation only mic. So people who are worthy of actually watching, then you get put into the friends and family system where that means you're not a regular and you're, you know, you're, they, they are looking at you and they'll give you like a spot, like cold opening on another show, like in the belly room or whatever. And they're just like watching you to like, see how you do. And it's like, kind yeah. of like they're developing you, but you're not getting enough spots, you know, and there's a lot of people in the friends and fans. So it's like, it's a really hard process. And it's like, but also I tell people too, where it's like, you, you can't that can't be your only goal but it's everybody's goal it's like i want to get in the comedy star yeah, yeah so do i so do so so many people that i know who are actually talented you know and they're not getting booked there and so it's just like it's one of those things where it's like don't worry about you know the the clubs like worry about getting good and they'll eventually yeah. come to you yeah no for you sure know? no i was just curious because i you know i've, I've talked with jeremy Watkins about the process yeah. so he explained like how you know different levels it just yeah. seems so you know Impossible. i mean of course everyone thinks about like the comedy store right but yeah. there are so many places in la to do comedy but um the the one thing i, I was going to ask you about too was you know kill tony obviously kill tony left but um that was like an opportunity in a way because you know it's kind of a weird show because you know, it's like you only get to do a minute and like, you're, you're, you know, you're, but I, I know a lot of people have gotten great opportunities from it. You were on yeah. it, I think, before. Yeah, I was on um, it before it was like, I mean, it was still it was like popular. But and this is when I was a year and a half in. I'm like, I wish I didn't do it because now it's on the mm-hmm. Internet. You know what I mean? Uh. <laughs> um, and I'm like, God damn. But yeah, I was like a year and a half in. I think the f- I did it twice. And like the first time, like I don't it probably like really didn't go well. And the second time, like it went well in the time but it's still like such a bad representation of my comedy now. Like, yeah. you know, you really don't start to click into gears till like year five, you know what I mean? So where you're like a way better performer, like nervous tics are going down, your, you know, you, you, your like thought process is clearer, you're, you know, quiet when they're laughing, you're not over jumping the punch, like just little, little technical things like that. That starts to like happen really at five years in. And so I'm like, fuck, I wish I didn't do it. But it was fine. Like I said, like, you know, at the time, like I won the spot, like at the ice house. So like I did, you know, yeah. I did better than the, most of the other people that were on the show. Like they didn't get booked to do the show. So I was like, no, oh, it's fine. But I'm just like, I still don't like it. But, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, then after that, then the show really blew up and they start going into the main room and I'm like, oh, fuck, I wish I did it like later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's a great concept. I think it's a really fun show. And, um, I think, yeah, what they, what they did with that is like, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, what's the word inspiring because you're like, Oh, like yeah. that's just something they created. This is like their idea and like, they're killing it, like making so much money off of it. And it's just like, yeah, if you just have a good idea, like everything will happen through that, you know? Yeah, for sure. I was, um, oh geez i can't remember now i think it was might have been 2020 or 2019 but i was at the comedy store and um i I signed up for it but it was crazy because there was like i think like 300 people yeah (laughs) that signed up and i was like there's no way i'm getting picked like yeah um and i'm really glad that i didn't get picked yeah (laughs) now that i look back at it like i'm like I mean, I thought I had a really good joke and now I look back, I'm like, that was a terrible joke. <laughs> um, so I'm really glad I didn't do it, but it still, it was such a great experience. And the thing, um, the thing that I like about the kill Tony thing is that for me, because I am, you know, I spent a lot of my time in my studio working on deadlines. Yeah. Um, and I love to listen to, you know, comedy or comedy podcasts mostly, but kill Tony was so entertaining while I was working because I, it was just, it's so funny. And right. I love, um, the reactions of you know of tony and the guest to the comic but yeah. i actually have learned a lot about stand-up by just mm-hmm. listening to it because tony um even though a lot of you know a lot of people are like oh man he's just roasting all stuff but if you listen to yeah, him but that's what he does yeah but if you listen to him he's actually teaching them how to be totally. a, a comedian because yeah. 
you know, he'll start getting things out of these people that, you know, he's like basically personal things that are really, really funny. Yeah. And it's like, you should use that in your act. <laughs> like, why yeah, don't you yeah, talk yeah. about that? You For know, there's sure. a lot of stuff like that. Where he's I'm like, very good at, um, he's like, you could see it. I don't even think he's like intentionally trying to teach people. If he is, then he's doing, you know, but I feel like he, he can hear the, the, that it's not authentic. Most people can't like, you know, yeah. now whether they have a trained ear for it where they're like, Oh, this yeah. is off. Cause this isn't authentic, <laughs> you know, but like, that's just, I always say my comedy is like music. So <laughs> Like I can hear it when I hear something, just like how musicians are like, oh, that's off key. That's not in pitch. Like, ooh, those harmonies are bad. Like I can hear that with comedy. And, uh, you yeah. know, a lot, uh, the more and more you do comedy, the more that not only do your jokes get better, but your ear gets trained better. Yeah. So the, the longer you do it, you're like, so as soon as you start hearing someone, you're like, no, nope, that's not connecting. Cause that, that, uh, you forced this part. Obviously that's not true. So you put this here to put that, but now that like, you did like so i'm sure when he's seeing it he's just like ugh, no blah blah but it is making these people like you know be like oh okay i should talk about that or like yeah what i don't why don't i do that because people are human and they lead with their ego a lot of the way and they go yeah. well i think this is funny and i want to talk about this and i and i'm like oh are you doing this now because you have an agenda <laughs> or is this are you authentically just trying to like be a vessel like and just be like well you know this is what it is and a lot of people have an agenda and it comes off in their comedy immediately it, and then it's just disingenuous and we're all like we don't like this yeah, yeah. no yeah for sure <laughs> no it's 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 uh, like i said or before it's just this that's the process is so interesting to me yeah. and that, i love how every comic that i talk to has a, a you know a different way of getting to the same place basically it's, it's sure. i find it really interesting and like yeah. the same thing is with with illustration you know um you know i i meet a lot of illustrators that you know they're ju they're just getting out of art school or whatever it is yeah. and they they want to do covers for time magazine and it's like mm -hmm. it's it doesn't work that way yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You're like, like you 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 have to it's it takes years of yeah. doing terrible jobs for no money and right. you know it, Sorry, you build it up one and... second i'm gonna turn my fan on i'm getting like super oh no no problem <laughs> no way my room is like i was doing long by the way i was like if you see like my pillows that why they don't have um covers on them so i literally just washed all my laundry and then i didn't i didn't have time to put my pillowcases back on but now like my room is so hot from the dryer and the sun's blasting in i was like oh my god i'm dying but anyway <laughs> But um, um, wait, what were you just saying again? I'm sorry. Well, well, I was just just saying how I find the similarities between like what you were talking about and illustration. Like it, it's very similar, um, totally. like just like you, you have to work at it and earn it. And sure. it's it's fun um, for me getting into comedy because I I understand all these things. And so I'm taking it um, like even things that other comics might be disappointed in. Yeah. I, I look at it more like, no, this is like, I'm eating this up. This is like, yeah. this is going to help me become better. And I'm learning how not to do it. Totally. Um, and I'm just having a blast, man. I'm right. having so much fun. And I think one thing that I have, I've figured out for myself is I don't really care what yeah. anybody thinks of, of like, I'm just going to say, you know what i think is funny and and try to improve on it and and right um and you know i've i've, I've i feel so lucky to have to be able to have this platform i've learned so much i had jessica kirsten on um mm -hmm. and it was like going to school just listening to her yeah um and uh, oh my god i just saw her recently um yeah, at the so at, at zany's and yeah i have never seen a funnier show in my life yeah people were falling out of their chairs oh i love that the people oh, in the yeah. front row bit beer on her they're <laughs> laughing so hard i mean yeah it was unreal man Hell yeah. um, i was blown away and it was like and you, it's funny because i i felt so inspired yeah i was like oh my gosh i'm gonna i i just i just learned so much and you know right. the next time i get up i'm like yeah and i'm like i didn't go the way i wanted yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but at the same time it's like you know i just i feel like that's what's exciting to me about it, you know, is right. that process. And I, you know, I want to show you some fan art real quick before we get yeah. this thing. 
Um, but I wanted to ask you again, something about your writing process. Just, so I'm mm-hmm. just curious. Um, are you the type of person that sets aside time? Like I'm going to just sit and just write, or is it, is it just when it happens? Like when the thought just shows up in when any it happens. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm a firm believer. And this is like with every aspect of my life is like, you have to be in flow. You know what I mean? That's like trying to like swim upstream, you know, yeah. is it right? Upstream. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, I was like, which way is the one we're not supposed to be doing? <laughs> yeah. um, or trying to get out of the water when the tide's coming back in where it's like, you're, you're making it harder for yourself. Like, so when people, and I don't knock anybody's process or anything, but it's like, when you are writing because you are passionate or because like you are inspired it hits a lot different versus you writing something because you're just trying to hit a goal that ultimately is just serving your ego. Your mm. ego is telling you, I need to write. I need to write. Why? Because your ego goes, well, I, I need to be great. I need to be great. I need to be doing this more. I need more success. I need like, yeah. and so when you're like, all of those are false reasons to really write, you should write because you're like, I'm so inspired to or this is so funny, or this is so interesting. Like mm. I feel moved when you feel moved, yeah. then you write because then yeah. it's like, Oh, I feel this because when I go like, okay, uh, what could I write about? Okay. There was a time <laughs> a guy robbed me. Is that funny? Okay. You know, and it's like, mm-hmm. it doesn't hit the same when you're what, cause that's me like thinking, uh, well, and I'm like, if I'm thinking, then I'm yeah. not. See, that's, that's, I, uh, I like hearing that because that for me, it's like, I usually just something will pop in my head and I just, I immediately just start writing stuff on my phone just so I don't forget. Um, I'll be in the shower. I'm like, Oh, stop. I'll like reach out and start typing something or it it always comes organic that way. Um, But you know, I, it's so funny because I I get these weird uh, I guess run-ins with different comics. They're like, dude, Mm -hmm. like you got to write some bits about, you, you know being covered in tattoos because it's so weird you, you just show up and you you start doing comedy but you're covered in tattoos like you need to talk about that and it's like i don't feel inspired to talk yeah. about that like right. i don't i don't think it's that important that i've got tattoos that i need to like start explaining to people why i have fucking right. tattoos totally. like it's not it's not fun i have not same thing with my art do you should talk about your art and what you do like why it's not funny to me right <laughs> you know, it's like you know, yeah. like <laughs> you'll feel called to whatever you, you know what I mean? Cause there, there's times where people are like Monterey, like you don't have any Donald Trump jokes. But, and I'm like, cause I don't, <laughs> cause all of you do. And I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, and most of them are meaty fucking ochre. So it's like, yeah. you got it covered. So I don't need to write another Don. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and those are always, and it's like, like I said, I don't knock other people's processes. Like if you're the type of person where like, I just have to write, I just have to write because like, it gives me discipline. It gives me structure. It gives me, you know what I mean? Like something to look forward to for sure. But I a firm believer in making sure you're not doing things based out of fear and making sure you're not doing things based off ego and making sure you're not yeah. doing things to please other people. So yeah. if you're like, I got to talk about my tattoos because everybody's, a, everybody doesn't give a fuck exactly. about you. <laughs> like as soon as you start having fun and making them laugh, they're like, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And people used to tell me that too. They're like, well, like if you're a cute girl, you have to talk about like, you have to address it because most people aren't going to look at you like a con. And I'm like, no, I don't. I'm like, I will sound yeah. like a fucking comic. I don't care if I don't look like a goddamn comic, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, that, and that goes with anything in life is just like, you don't, if you're like, ah, uh, I don't want to. I, I hate my job, but I'm not going to leave because I'm scared. I'm not going to like have a 401k. I'm like, why would you be doing something that you're based out of fear and think that your life is going to turn out good? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're literally yeah. being like, uh, I'm, I, I'm miserable in this relationship, but I'm not going to leave because I, I'm scared. I'm going to be alone. So you're literally saying to yourself, I'm not happy, but because of fear, I'm literally not going to do anything about it. It's like, why yeah. is fear your priority? Why is fear what you're basing your life off? That's of? true. Like, yeah, it's, it's wild. So I'm like, and I don't write in that position either. Like, Oh, all these other comics are getting these spots or like, Oh my God. Like I'm not like on TV yet. Or I don't have a writing credit. So like, I must be, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm not ever going to be in that space. It's hard not to sometimes, you know? Yeah. 
but as soon hard as hard not start, to compare in like any aspect of your life, you know, for sure. But as soon as yeah. I start making decisions based in that filter of how I'm feeling, I know nothing good's coming out of it. If right. I'm like, Oh fuck, she just got this. And he just got this. Okay. Well, let me do. So I'm like, yeah. all right. So now I'm operating off of jealousy. What good is going to come out of jealousy? Even if it, you know, you could be inspired by somebody. I said, damn, that's a funny fucking joke. Oh shit. She said that. Oh, that makes me, that's the way to do it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So yeah, always, always when you're moved. Yeah. You know? My favorite thing is like, I, what a lot of my stuff I found really comes out of, uh, I was hanging out with my friends, having some drinks and I said something so fucking funny that everyone was dying laughing. I'm like, where's my yeah. phone? I got to write that shit down. Yeah. And that's my funniest stuff. You yeah. know, like I was on the phone with my mom the other day. Um, I usually talk to her in the mornings when I walk my dog and, uh, mm -hmm. cause my parents live far away. So it's my time to talk to my mommy yeah. and, uh, my mommy says yeah. I'm a good boy. And I just started talking to her about this, this stupid egg stuff that I keep seeing these commercials for. It's, it's mm -hmm. called just egg. And, um, and it's not in the whole advertisement. It's about how it's the perfect scrambled eggs and it's the perfect this and that they keep going on and on, but it's not egg at all. It comes from a, a mug of plant or something like that. Mm. Oh, it's and the, like a vegan replacement or something. Yeah. But it's like, they're yeah. trying their actual advertisement is actually geared towards getting rid of real chicken eggs because chicken eggs are harmful to the environment. It's like this whole thing. And it's like, like, what are you going to do? Have like mass gen chicken genocide? Like, so we don't have chickens anymore. The chickens are still yeah. going to be here and they're still right. going to be laying eggs. And whether you like it or not, they lay an egg every day. We're just not going to eat those eggs. We're going to waste those eggs. Yeah. But like, I was just, I, it was just funny. It was one of those things where I just had this, this rant with my mom on the phone and she was like dying laughing. And I'm like, yeah, like I, I don't have anything for that right yeah. now, but, but I know there's something there that for I can sure. build on. But it's those kind and of when you're, it's more so like your passion and your conviction behind it. Cause a lot yeah. of times with a lot of stand up, I mean, some people obviously it 100% there's technicians and they're such yeah. good writers that like they are literally like in, 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 in a subject where they're unraveling, unraveling. You're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But some comics, it's it's the conviction and the passion behind them that you could be talking about a red T-shirt and you're like, if I fucking wear red, oh, now I'm in a gang. Oh, so now this guy and like you just keep going and go. And we're so invested in like your reaction and like you yeah. like how it's so ridiculous that like we're on board with you. So it's like comedy's not always in the writing. Yeah, obviously you want it to be both. That's the best comedy is it's the writing and it's the personality and it's the technique, you know. But it's like, that's the, that sometimes is just funny as itself is like when we know you and we're just like, oh, he's going to get mad at this. You know, you yeah. hear the audience get excited. To get when, pissed off. Yeah, yeah. When they're like, yep. And I went into the bank and they ran out of envelopes and the whole entire crowd laughs because they know like, oh, it's coming. He's pissed. And he's like, gonna, yeah. why are you, you know, that's Lewis Flat. You, you know, you're just oh, like, yeah. yes. And like people fall in love with your, with your nature, not just your. Totally. Your, talent yeah I, it's it, yeah it's it's so funny like i like seriously though you should look into this this stuff because it's really weird they, they their advertisement goes on and on about how um how much water it how many 53 gallons of water to to make one chicken egg and they're going on and on and on it's like how much water does it take to plant your fucking mug of beans like yeah. fields and fields of it like right <laughs> and then and then they're, and then they 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 put it in a plastic container like a mayonnaise mm. plastic thing so how much plastic are you creating for the environment right now? so like, wait does it literally look like a plastic fake eggshell it's it's like a plastic it no it's a plastic mayonnaise thing like filled with yellow gook and you oh. squirt it on a pan and they make scrambled eggs out of it or whatever oh. and it's just like it's just funny to me that's like you you know how much gas you're spending shipping all that shit all over the place oh for sure but like, that, that, that's why anybody who gets like hoity-toity about like you know whether it's animals or whatever and i'm like your car what do you think is inside your tires it's the fucking <laughs> bones of fucking dead animals like what do you think's on the fucking steering wheel yeah. like what do you oh you care about all the animals but you don't care about the people who are building your phones and you're wearing yeah. your nikes and your laptop it's like you know, how many I, mice are killed how many mice and rodents are killed every year when they when they plow vegetable fields 
So you right. just eat your vegetables. You know how many how much animal protein is in your veggies? Right. It's, it's weird. And, and I get that people like <laughs> I get that they care and they're like trying, but then you have to have enough awareness to be like, this is what I'm doing that I think I'm helping. And yeah. don't don't call yourself a fucking hero and don't like make don't we don't need you uh, to fucking make us all like little followers like to your like, yeah. how you want to help and save. Great. But don't act like your your hands aren't dirty. Like this is and this has been an advertisement for just egg. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's not even fucking egg at all. Yeah, it's so funny, man. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's hilarious. The commercials, JB Smooth, I think, is the one that's doing the the mm. voice narration, that's and he's all that. like, he was like, he's like, uh, and and you know what I find is funny too is it's like that they. <laughs> They got this guy. He wakes up. And he's like, he he wakes up in the morning. He didn't even have a shower, and you think he's in a bad mood now nah, because he's about to have the most fluffiest farm egg he's ever had before. And he's going on and on and on. And he goes, and would you would you even would you, would you even notice that it's not even real egg? It comes from a plant. And he's just going on and on about how awesome this is. And it's like, mm -hmm. first of all, that is not what determines my mood is like <laughs> if I have an egg for fucking yeah. breakfast. I'm like, it's crippling depression in the state of the fucking world. And that Los Angeles is a terrible place. And egg yeah. is not going to fucking reflect any change. <laughs> it's a funny commercial. I think yeah. it's hilarious. But anyways. Um, it sounds like a parody. Yeah, yeah, it does. It actually does. Um, I want to show you some fan art. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't remember who's first here, but I'm going to share the screen with you. Um, and these come from all over the place. Oh, wow. How cool. So let's, tell me if you see this. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, first, my God. First, that's going to scare you a little bit. This <laughs> <one>. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, spot on. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> spot on. This is by uh, Hosian Reservoir. Uh, it's really cool. I mean, my hair is longer, but other than that, fucking nailed it. <laughs> that's the only thing I'd change. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, my oh my god! I love that. That's hilarious. Oh uh, my god! I love to see that. It's like obviously, like my eyes are what people notice so much, and I'm like, yeah. I was like, are they proportionately that big? Because so far, <laughs> I'm noticing that they must be really big. You do have pretty are... big eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this okay. is by Dominic Zeilinger, by the way. Good from job, Dominic. I Austria. Know exactly what picture he took. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and this oh, is. Oh wow. By Jacques uh, Lemonia. Wow, that's dope. It's it's still like it's um, it 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 looks like scary, like in a way, but like in a cool <laughs> way, like you know. Must have I'm, those Betty Davis eyes. Yeah, yeah, but like he got like the they look like such like real eyes and yeah. I'm like, I hope that's not what I really look like. But <laughs> I, I'm like, I hope I was like, if that is, I'm like, damn, the, uh -huh. like, how our perception is, is very different, but yeah, no, that's cool. Really cool. Oh my God. I love that. That is so cute. I'll zoom in on this more. Yeah. This is by is so cute. Miss, Mr. Ponce. Is his name. How cool. That's yeah. like I don't even what I don't even know what that's called, but it's like is that paint or chalk or like? Um, yeah, I think this. To, I think this is a gouache painting, which is kind of like an opaque watercolor. Oh, see, it almost looks like I'm like, there's no way he didn't actually use the picture and then paint over it, right? No, that looks yeah, but just, I'm like, that's just someone's like real art. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Super cool. Oh, <laughs> this is getting cool. All right, now we're getting. Oh, close this to is. My vibe. I just realized this is the same artist. So he did two pieces. This is. Oh, yeah. this is so cool. Yeah, that's dope. I like the you know mystical occult aspect. I'm into it. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's very nice, and very naughty. This is like Eve. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. And, oh, uh, the apple. oh is, here we go. Yeah, this is here by uh, Paula Petluani. How cool. Yeah, it's like my, yeah, like when you look like up close, yeah, like just seeing all their like, and this is, I'm assuming just one pencil or one, is this charcoal? I don't know. Um, it's, it's like 
yeah it could be pastel or something i'm not sure yeah but it's yeah it's really cool how people yeah just how they how yeah just how you can like look at some i'm so bad i was always very bad in art class and i feel like my art teacher was just like oh, sister i'm gonna let you pass but just don't do this anymore. like you, you um, should be a comedian <laughs> Yeah, you should just do something where you're talking. Nothing yeah. with your hands. But it's so yeah. weird because it's like, I remember we would try, you know, you do like still life or whatever. And I'm like, I whatever's here, I cannot get it on here. You know what I mean? Like where I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, it was always like, I draw like very, you know, one dimensional where I'm like, okay, here's the vase. Okay, here's the flower. And it's just, so yeah, it's interesting to see that people <laughs> have that skill set. And again, that's similar to comedy as well. The like someone yeah. being one dimensional, like they might have an idea that mm -hmm. that the idea is actually kind of funny, but they don't know how to deliver it. You know, right? I've totally. seen that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is by Pablo yes. Salas. Oh, how yeah. cool! Very yeah. sketchy style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, you got. Very... Oh, okay. I thought you had two microphones. Um, yeah. Oh, it's a mic stand. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I see now. What are you, Neil Brennan, whatever is like, yeah. His, oh, no, his was three mics, right? Something like that. Oh yeah. Three mics. <laughs> like I just, I just like the. the oh, mics. wow. Damn. Um, wow. They did so good. Not saying that everybody else, everybody did really great. I was like, yeah, if anyone's <laughs> watching, you all did really great, but you know, obviously these are all different, um, techniques of art yeah. i don't even know what to call it but it's like this is obviously they're trying to be accurate as possible yeah. versus people are being like more interpretive but yeah they <laughs> i'm like right you're like no yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, so most most of them were more caricature like uh, yeah 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 this is by christine variety yeah. christine you killed it that's beautiful you did great yeah. wow yeah, she does pretty awesome that's so cool. uh Hey, thank you everybody uh, for sending in the artwork. That's really yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was super cool. Thank you. I know I'm going to have you send me those. <laughs> yeah, I'll send those cool. to you. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for joining me for this. Um, it's yeah, really fun to just talk uh, comedy stuff with you. Um, sure. And I can't wait to to see you sometime again. And um, is, can you let people know like where they can find you and if you, what, yeah. if you have something coming up that people can follow mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff? Um, I'll, I'm, <clears throat> look, I'm on Instagram and my Instagram is Monterey M. It's M-O-N-A-R-E-Y-M. And I am actually going on the East Coast for like almost three weeks. I'm going, I'm doing shows with Drew Lynch. I'm featuring for him. Um, so I'm going to north carolina south carolina virginia and then i'm doing new york city and then i'm doing buffalo my hometown oh, um, the, the helium in buffalo and then yeah and then after that i'll be like holidays and whatever just chilling but um yeah you can find me there i have a podcast called the shaman podcast it's on spotify it's on apple and basically the whole entire podcast is a hybrid of comedy spirituality psychedelics and sometimes i have comics on there and i like read their tarot cards and like we just go oh, cool. joke around but we talk about like you know uh spiritual experiences mystical experiences or like you know concepts of life and death and tragedy and trauma and like healing and just all my favorite things that's like, awesome that's cool yeah so everybody check that out that's awesome and again thank you so much um i really appreciate you uh taking the time to talk to him a little me about this no, thank you so ha -ha much for stuff yeah. i like to know about the ha -has. um and everyone else thank you so much and uh we'll see you next time yeah bye you want answers truth.